In this tutorial, I will show you how to install a Raspberry Pi operating system on your Raspberry Pi board and this without any external monitor. You will just need a computer with an SD card slot, a Raspberry Pi and a Wi-Fi network to connect to. At the end of this tutorial, you will have remote access to the Raspberry Pi desktop directly from your own computer. And let's get started. The very first step before using the Pi is to flash an operating system on the SD card you have and do some configuration. I will show you how you can easily install the Raspberry Pi OS on your micro SD card, but also how to set up the Wi-Fi and an SSH connection so we can get access to the Raspberry Pi. So you can start by going on Google and just type Raspberry Pi and go to raspberrypi.com. So raspberrypi.com and then just go to software here. So you should have raspberrypi.com slash software. And we are going to download and install the Raspberry Pi Imager here. So what is this? This is actually a software you can install on Windows, Mac OS and also Linux. And this will allow you to easily flash the operating system, so the Raspberry Pi operating system, into your SD card. So click on whatever operating system you have right now. OK, I am running Windows, so I'm going to download it for Windows. Then you can wait a few seconds. OK, and when you have the installer, you can just run the installer. Maybe it will ask you to confirm. So I'm clicking on yes if you have a pop up on Windows. And then, well, let's install the Raspberry Pi Imager on the computer. So click on install. And that's pretty much it. So now you wait a bit. OK. And let's finish. So you can run it directly or not. So let's finish the installation. And if you want to run it, well, you can just go on the Windows button here. or just press the Windows key and search for Raspberry Pi. And you will find the Raspberry Pi Imager here on the applications. So if you have another pop up, you click on yes to allow the software to run on Windows. And then you will get this software here. So make sure that here I have version 1.7. Okay, make sure that you have at least 1.7. It can be a higher version, but no lower than 1.7. So if you already have this installed and it's not 1.7, just remove the software and reinstall it by downloading the latest version. Now, well, what you can do is you can take your micro SD card and put the micro SD card on your computer. So I just did that and well, maybe you will have some file manager that opens. You can just close everything and then you're going to here click on choose operating system and you're going to choose the latest operating system here. So the first one on the top, then you click on choose storage and it should automatically detect the SD card that you have put. So here I have a 16 gigabyte SD card. So I click on this and then well, before you click on write, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this settings button. And we are going to configure actually SSH and the Wi-Fi and a few other things before we write the operating system. And this again, if you don't have this is because you maybe have a version that is not 1.7. OK, so if you have an earlier version, please download the new one because you would not have this uh, option, these settings. So what do we do on this menu? You're going to click on enable SSH and leave it like this. OK, we're going to use SSH to get access to the Raspberry Pi using the terminal. And I'm going to show you that just a bit later. And from this, we will be able to configure everything. For example, get access to a remote desktop, etc. So you click on enable SSH and then you have set username and password. So you can keep Pi. OK, this is like the default username for Raspberry Pi, you can keep this or choose anything else. And I'm going to keep Pi and then you set a password. So just any password you want. This is going to be the password for the user named Pi. OK, so make sure that you, of course, type the correct password and that you remember it. And then you go down and you're going to configure the Wi-Fi connection. And so here, well, if you are already connected, so I'm going to check here and you can see that my computer is already connected to a network, so a Wi-Fi network called your Wi-Fi network. So this is actually a hotspot I have made from my phone. 
okay? And I have named it your Wi-Fi network, so it's easier for this lesson. And if you look at show password, so it should automatically put the name, so the SSID and the password. So I have set your Wi-Fi network as the name and your password as the password. So of course, make sure that you use the correct Wi-Fi name and the correct password because that's not going to be the same for you. Okay, so make sure you use the one, the same one that your computer is connected to. That's super, super important because if your computer and your Raspberry Pi are not connected to the same Wi-Fi network, then they won't be able to find each other. Okay, so once you have configured the Wi-Fi, you go down and then you're going to also do this set local settings. And so you can choose your time zone. So for me, it's uh, Europe, Paris for France, and then a keyboard layout. So if you have a QWERTY keyboard, you keep US. But for me, I'm going to go to FR because I have a French uh, keyboard. So make sure that you use the keyboard layout that corresponds to your actual keyboard. And then that's pretty much it. So to recap, we have enable SSH set username and password with a custom password here and username pi, and then click on setup, so configure Wi-Fi, put the correct name and password, the same as your computer is connected to, and then set local with the time zone and the keyboard layout. You can click on save, and then all you need to do is click on write, and you have a pop-up here, all existing data will be erased. Okay, so make sure that what you had previously on the SD card is not something you want to keep because that's gonna be completely erased and the operating system is gonna take all the space on the SD card. So are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And then you can wait. So that's gonna take a few minutes, okay, to write the operating system on the SD card. Okay, and after a few minutes, you should see this pop-up write successful which means that the Raspberry Pi operating system has been downloaded, has been written to your SD card and everything worked correctly. So you can click on continue and now, well, congratulations, you have installed Raspberry Pi operating system on the SD card. On boot, your Raspberry Pi should automatically try to connect to the Wi-Fi network you've provided. And also SSH will be automatically enabled, which will help us in the next step. So now what we are going to do is to boot the Raspberry Pi. And before you do that, make sure that the Raspberry Pi is powered off, okay? And that nothing is connected to it. No cable, nothing. This is very important. So you can take the SD card out of your computer and just plug it to the SD card slot of the Raspberry Pi, just like you see on the photo. Then once the SD card is correctly plugged, you can power it on. Okay, and to power on the Raspberry Pi, make sure that you use a good power supply with at least five volt and two amps. Okay, you can use an official Raspberry Pi adapter or even a recent phone charger. One thing to make sure is don't power your Raspberry Pi from the laptop directly. Okay, the current may be too low and you will have some problems later on. So when you boot the Raspberry Pi, you will see first a red LED powered on and then the green LED should blink randomly. If the blink LED blinks randomly, this is actually a good sign. It means that the Raspberry Pi is booting. And after a few seconds, maybe one or two minutes stop, the Raspberry Pi should be connected to your Wi-Fi network. And this is where we're gonna go to the next step and find the Raspberry Pi IP address on the network. What is the current state now? You have this computer right here that is connected to the Wi-Fi network. So here for me, it's your Wi-Fi network. And then you have also the Raspberry Pi, which has boot and is connected to the Wi-Fi network. But to be able to connect to it, you need to know what is the Raspberry Pi IP address. So first, how to find the Raspberry Pi IP address? So there are many ways to do this, but one way is to use a software that's going to scan the network and find the IP addresses on the network. And the one I'm gonna use here is Angry IP Scanner, okay? And why I use it? Because it's multi-platform. You can use it on Windows, Mac OS, and also Linux. So you just type Angry IP Scanner and you go to here, angryip.org. You can go to Downloads, and then you can see you have either the Windows version, the Mac OS or Linux. So here, of course, I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna uh, 
click here on Windows installer, but before let's see quickly on Mac OS. So if you are on Mac OS, you will need to install the Angry IP Scanner bundle here and then right click and open. Okay, and before that, you will make sure that you have Java installed. And so you can click on Java here. And well, this is going to install Java. So you can click on download now and just select, well, the version you have. So Mac OS, this is the same if you are using Linux. Okay, so you can just download with the current version you have standard JDK and just download from here and install it. And the same for Linux. And now that you have Java, you can so click here or on Linux, you can also download the package that you want. But if you are on Windows, Windows it's even better because the installer already includes Java runtime. So you don't even need to install Java on the side. So I'm gonna click on Windows installer. And then you wait that the download is finished. And you can click on the installer. So maybe you have a pop-up, you click on yes, you click on next, and then you just choose the path or you just leave it like this and click on install and just wait a few seconds. All right, now you click on finish and you can just search on the Windows bar or on the application menu for Angry IP Scanner. You launch it and okay, you click on next, 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 and close. But well, that doesn't really matter. And so you will have this interface. And once again, before I even start to do anything here, go back to Wi-Fi settings and make sure that your computer is on the same Wi-Fi network that you have set for your Raspberry Pi. This is super, super important because if you are not on the same network, you just can't find the Raspberry Pi. And now let's see how to configure this so we can find the Raspberry Pi IP address. So what do we have here? We will be able to scan when we click on the start button to scan a range in the network, so in the Wi-Fi network, and we're gonna have different IPs, the ping, the host name, etc. So the IP address will be all the IP address that we try. And then if we find something, so if there is a host, okay, if there is, for example, a laptop or a Raspberry Pi or anything else, we will find it and we will have a ping, which means like how long did it take to ping or to get access to the host and then you have the host name so that can be raspberry pi that can be your laptop name etc the thing is that with raspberry pi sometimes here with angry ip scanner you will not see host name so we will click on this icon here and on the right you will uh, look for mac vendor and click on the left button to add it and click on ok so now we have mac vendor so that will allow us to know for sure that we have found the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the next thing to do is, so here we have host name. You can see this is the host name that corresponds to this computer right here. Okay, so for you it's gonna be different of course. And then you click on IP here. And well, you may have just a few or a lot, it depends. For me, I have a lot of things because I have some virtual machines running, but uh, you will find something like Wi-Fi. So, Maybe it's not the same thing, but find a line that looks like Wi-Fi and that has an address like this that starts by 192.168. Okay, if you have this, then that's a good start. You may also have something that starts with 10.0. Okay, that's also valid. That's like a local network. And so, well, try to find the line that corresponds to what I have here on my computer. So I click on this. And then you can see the IP range now is 192.168.31.0 to, well, the same first three numbers and 255. So if you don't have this, you just delete and you put zero at the end and here you put 255. Okay, so this, the first three numbers actually correspond to the network, okay? So the current network has a name, but also has an IP address, which is 192.168.31. And then all the addresses here in the network. And you have actually 256 possibilities from zero to 255. Actually, this one is the network when it finished with zero. 
and 255 is called also the broadcast address. And so what it's going to do, it's going to scan everything between the 0 and 255 and the Raspberry Pi should, of course, be somewhere between those two IP addresses in this network. So once you have this, and of course that the Raspberry Pi has already boot, so make sure that you have boot the Raspberry Pi for at least one or two minutes for the first boot because it can take some time to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Then you can click on Start and you're going to wait for a few seconds. Okay, if you have that kind of alert, you click on Allow Access, of course. Okay, and you can see scanning completed in 37 seconds, so it can take more or less time, it depends. Well, you click on Close, and then, well, so if it's red, it means that nothing has been found. If it's blue, something has been found. But let's actually click on Ping and sort by Ping. Okay, and you can see that, well, we have the Raspberry Pi here. So what happened here is that we found three IP addresses, okay? This one corresponds to actually this computer, so of course it's gonna be found. And then we have something else here and something else here. And you can see we have a host name, raspberrypi.local, and we also have Mac vendor Raspberry Pi trading. So if you find one of those two, you know that you have found the Raspberry Pi. And what is the IP address of the Raspberry Pi? Well, this is the IP address here. So for me, that's 192.168.31.76. And of course, it's gonna be different for you. Hey, I hope you're learning a lot. And I hope also that everything is working well for you until this point. Just a quick note to let you know that this tutorial is actually a free extract of a complete Raspberry Pi course, which contains 10 hours of content and many projects. If you want to save a lot of time in your Raspberry Pi journey by learning the right things from the start, then check out the course in the description. And now back to the video. What we can do now is to use SSH to take control over the Raspberry Pi and really get access to it. And the first thing you can do is open a file manager, okay? and go to your user, so I'm going to go to users and then uh, my user, okay? Here, you may find a folder named .ssh. So if you don't have all the .dot folders, those are actually hidden folders. So you can go on view, um, show, and then hidden items. Make sure that you check that box. And so you can find the .ssh. If you can still see all the other uh, dot, so maybe not the same as me, but if you can find other hidden folders here, but not the .ssh, then that's fine. You don't need to do anything. But if you see the .ssh, you go here, and you may have a noun host file. So maybe yes, maybe not. But if you have one, you're gonna just delete it. Okay, that step is just in case we have some trouble connecting and now, well, you can close the file manager and you can open a terminal. So how to open a terminal or, in other words, the command line tool on Windows? Well, you just uh, open the Windows menu here and you can type CMD, for example, and you can open command prompt and you will get something like this. So I will zoom in with control and the mouse here. Great. Just a bit more. And if you are on macOS, you can also search for command line. And if you are on Linux, well, I probably guess that if you are on Linux, you know how to open a terminal. So once you have the terminal, whether it is macOS, Linux, or Windows, you have the SSH command. So if you just type SSH and you press enter, you should have something like this. Usage SSH. So basically that's kind of a help for SSH. If you don't have this, Okay, if you have SSH command not found or something like that on Windows, well, you can go on a web browser and you can search for PuTTY. So P-U-T-T-Y. And this is an SSH client okay, that you can download. So you can just download. Okay, so you download the installer here and you just install it and you can then use it to connect to SSH to the Raspberry Pi using a graphical interface. But this is just in case that SSH doesn't work on your Windows. For example, if you have an old version of Windows that is lower than Windows 10, you will not have SSH by default. All right, so coming back to the terminal, 
How do we get access to the Raspberry Pi? Well, you will put the SSH command and then space, and then you need to provide the username with which you want to connect to the Pi. And so what is the username? Well, if you remember in the lesson where we actually flashed the operating system into the SD card, we had to specify a username and a password. And the username I have specified was Pi. So if you have provided a different username, make sure you use the different username here, okay? So you put the username and then you put at, and then we need to put the IP address. So what is the IP address? Well, the IP address is the one you have found here with angry IP scanner. So 192.168.31.76. So I put it here, 192.168.31.76. Make sure that you double check that this is the same that you are using here. So once you have this SSH space username at IP address, you can press enter. And you will see this. So are you sure you want to continue? Yes, no. So you just type yes and you press enter. And now you can see that it's asking for the password. And so what is the password? Well, the password is the one you have provided also when you were flashing the operating system. So you had to provide a username, which was Pi or something else, and you had to provide a password. So here you're gonna type the exact same password. And this is very important. If the password doesn't work here and you get a password denied or something like this, it's just because you have put a wrong password during the installation. So you need to go back to flashing the SD card and make sure that you use the correct password. So I press enter. Okay, you should not see, when you type the password, you should not see anything. You just type the password and you press enter. And now you can see if you've put the correct password. Now we are actually in the Raspberry Pi. So we are still in the terminal, but the terminal is now connected to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. And we are actually inside the Pi. So we have access to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see here, we have the user Pi and the host is also named Raspberry Pi. Let's now install and configure VNC. VNC will simply allow you to use the Raspberry Pi desktop from your own computer. And this is great. So you don't need to only use the terminal with command lines and you also don't need to have a monitor plugged to your Pi. Even if you have a monitor, you will see that it's much more convenient to work without it and to work just from your computer with a remote connection. And the reason why we have set up SSH just before is simply because we need to access the Raspberry Pi through SSH so we can set up VNC. So how to set up VNC? Well, first make sure that you are connected to the Raspberry Pi. So you should have something like this in the command line. Note that you can exit SSH by typing here exit and press enter. And now you can see I am back to the terminal on Windows. So I will type the command again, SSH by at the IP address I have found before, 192.168.31.76. So make sure that you use the same username you've put during the installation and make sure you use the IP address that you have found before. Then I put the password. And so make sure you've put the password you have also put during the installation. All right, and I'm back to the Raspberry Pi. Now what I will do is I will do sudo space raspi dash config. What does it mean? Well, it means I'm gonna open the configuration of the Raspberry Pi and sudo is here to get the admin rights. So the administrator privileges. So you type this exactly and then you press enter and you will have something like this. So you will have a menu that looks like this. And so you can navigate in this menu using the the rows from the keyboard, okay, up and down, you can see, and right to go to select and finish, okay, and left to come back here to the menu. And we are going to go first on interface options and then on VNC. So you find interface, VNC, you press enter to validate. And then you can see, would you like the VNC server to be enabled? So I'm gonna go on yes and press enter. Okay, the VNC server is enabled. I also press enter and then I'm gonna go with the right arrow to go to finish, I press enter. 
and now VNC is enabled. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So I will do sudo and then space reboot and then I press enter. And when I do this, the Raspberry Pi is going to reboot. And now if you can see, if I press enter, well, the command line is not answering. It is a bit stuck. So you will wait until the command line is not stuck anymore. It means that the Raspberry Pi has reboot and that you can connect to it again. Okay, so you can see now the connection has been reset. So maybe you need to wait a bit more, let's say 20 seconds to one minute. Okay, so if you can't connect back to the Raspberry Pi, wait a bit more. Maybe it needs time to boot, connect to the Wi-Fi and be ready to accept an SSH connection. Okay, so now I think enough time has passed. What I'm going to do here, I'm not going to type the command again. I'm just going to use the up arrow. Okay, to go back to the previous command and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to put the password and I am back to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to type again sudo raspberry config with a dash here and then press enter and I am back to this menu. So enabling VNC is not the only thing we need to do. There are just a few more steps so that everything will work fine. So now you can go on system options. So you just press enter here, go to boot auto login, press enter, go to desktop auto login. So by default, maybe it's going to be console login, which means you don't have the desktop enabled. You can choose desktop so that you can boot on the graphical desktop, because if you try to get access to the desktop with VNC and the desktop is not enabled, well, that's not going to work. So you can choose desktop or even desktop auto login, which will make sure that you directly get access to the desktop. You don't need to log in before. And that's the one I'm going to choose here for simplicity. So you press enter here. Okay. And then you go right arrow finish. And you can see here, it's asking you directly, would you like to reboot now? So let's do yes again. And let's wait a few more seconds. Okay, and if it still hangs here, okay, if it doesn't go back to uh, this line, you can also try to press enter a few times until you have this connection reset. Now the Raspberry Pi should have boot again. So let's just use the up arrow to connect to it again. Let's put the password. And then in the Raspberry Pi, we can also use the up arrow to get to the last command, which was sudo raspberry config. If you use up, we can also use a uh, robot. So just go up until you find the raspberry config command. You press enter and back to the menu. This is going to be the last step here. We are going to go to display options and then resolution. So either resolution or VNC resolution. So you find this, you press enter. And well, the thing is that there is a default resolution that maybe will pose some problems and you will not be able to get access to the desktop for some weird reasons, right? So basically what you need to do is to set up a resolution manually by yourself by choosing one of those resolutions. So which one to choose? Well, actually, I would recommend to choose the resolution that is closer to the resolution you currently have on your computer screen. Okay, so for me, I have a full HD, so that's going to be uh, 1080p. So I'm going to choose that one. I press enter. Okay, so now the resolution is set to that. And then go back to finish. And you need to reboot again. So let's press yes again. And let's wait a few more seconds. Okay, and now the Raspberry Pi has reboot again. And we don't need the command line anymore. So we have set those three options in the Raspberry config menu. Now we can connect to the remote desktop. And how to connect to the remote desktop with VNC? Well, we will need a VNC client on our computer. So to do that, you will go to a web browser and you will just search for, so you can search for that VNC viewer, real VNC. So real VNC is the name. Okay. It's the name of the software. We're going to use that one. So you can go here, download VNC for Windows. OK, so you can actually click on Windows, but you also have Mac OS and Linux. And so if you want the URL, it's here, realvnc.com slash en slash connect slash 
download and then slash viewer slash windows. And here, well, so if you're on Windows, you click on Windows. If you're on Mac OS, you click on Mac OS, on Linux. And then you can see we have also a Raspberry Pi. But don't click on Raspberry Pi. Don't download for Raspberry Pi because what we're going to do here is we're going to install a client. So the client is from where we try to connect. OK, here I'm trying to connect from Windows to the Raspberry Pi. If I was to connect from another Raspberry Pi to this Raspberry Pi, I would choose Raspberry Pi as a client. OK, but now the client is actually the computer here. So this computer we are using right now. So if you have Windows, you click on Windows and just download the NC Viewer. So you wait a few seconds and then you can launch the executable. OK, select the language. OK, next, accept the license, next, go to next and then install. Maybe you have a pop up, you click on yes and then the installation is finished. OK, and back to the desktop, you can go to Windows button or the application and search for VNC viewer here you can click and open the vnc viewer app so let's remove that and now well you can go on file new connection and here you will need to put the ip address of the raspberry pi and so once again make sure that your computer is connected to the same wi-fi as the raspberry pi okay make sure you have not changed the wi-fi on the computer and so the ip address for me was 192.168.31. 76. I'm going to put the name. This doesn't really matter here, just the name. I'm going to put Raspberry Pi. And then you can just leave everything like this. OK. And then you simply double click. OK. It may ask you to confirm that you want to continue. And then you need to put a username and a password. So the username for me was Pi. So you put the same username as you've put before to connect to SSH and the same password. Then if you want, you can also click on remember password. So it's not going to ask you every time. And just if you ever modify the password on the Raspberry Pi, you will have an error trying to connect and you will need to provide the new password. So I click on OK. And well, what is this? That's the Raspberry Pi desktop. You are not connected to your Raspberry Pi and you have access to the desktop. So you can use the Raspberry Pi as a normal computer directly, remotely from your own computer. And we are going to finish the configuration. So just a few last steps before you can use the Raspberry Pi. So you can also uh, go here and select full screen. And now I am full screen on the Raspberry Pi. What I am going to do is I'm going to click on the Raspberry icon here and this will open the menu. So you can see the menu bar is actually on top. Okay, on Windows, it's at the bottom. Maybe on Ubuntu, it's on the left. Uh, well, here it's on top. You will go to Preferences. And then I'm going to go to Appearance Settings first. Okay, this is optional, but this will allow me to have... So if I go to Taskbar, I will put a larger taskbar. Okay, you can see it's a bit bigger for you to see in the course. So if you want it to be bigger, you can just change the icons here or maybe put it smaller. Okay, as you wish. Then you can also put it at the bottom. I'm going to leave it at the top. I'm going to go to system and the font is actually 12. So you can change the font if you want. I'm just going to put the font to 16 so you can easily read when I do stuff on the Raspberry Pi. But you can keep it like it was before. OK, and then that's pretty much it. I click on OK. And now let's finish the configuration. So you click here, you go to Preferences and then Raspberry Pi configuration here. So a few things that you have to know. So you have first on system the password. OK, so you can change the password if you want. You can go here, change the password and then you will reboot. And when you reboot with VNC, you will need to provide, of course, the new password. And make sure that also to uh, the boot to desktop is always checked here. Then on display, you can change the resolution of VNC. Okay. On interfaces, you can see that we have SSH and VNC that are already enabled. So we enable those 
from the terminal, but you can also enable and disable from the graphical interface. And here, of course, I recommend that you leave them enabled all the time. And then you can go to localization and set the local if you don't have set the local before when flashing the operating system, the time zone and also the keyboard. So if you have noticed that the keyboard layout doesn't correspond to your current keyboard, well, set the new keyboard here. Then you click on OK and it's done. You can also now check the Wi-Fi. So here I am connected to the Wi-Fi network named your Wi-Fi network, which is the one I use for this course. So if you click here, you can also choose a different network to connect to. And so note here that if you choose a different network to connect to, you will need to find the IP address again. So you will need to connect your computer to the same network as the Raspberry Pi, go to Angry IP Scanner, find the IP address again, and then connect back to the Raspberry Pi with VNC or even SSH if you want to. All right. And the last thing I am going to do here is I'm going to update the software. So Raspberry Pi OS, you have the operating system, but you have also a bunch of software and applications that are installed on top of the operating system. And even if you just installed it now, maybe not everything is up to date and it's always good to have up to date softwares. So you can click on this icon here and install updates. It's going to, well, it's going to fetch the new update comparing the versions and then install the update. So this can take quite a long time. It depends on your internet connection speed also because it's gonna download the new packages and install those. So you can wait a few minutes here. Okay, and when you see this, you can click on OK or it's just gonna disappear. And now one very important thing before we finish this installation section is that how to actually power off the Raspberry Pi. Well. Like your computer, you don't just switch off the power on your computer. You first shut it down properly using the menu and then you remove the power. Okay. If you just remove the power like that on the Raspberry Pi, well, this may lead to some problems. For example, your SD card could be corrupted and the next time you boot, it's not going to work. So how to power off the Raspberry Pi? You go here on the menu and you click on shutdown. Okay, and then you can click here on shutdown. After you click on shutdown, the Raspberry Pi is gonna shut down. So let's do this. If you are on VNC, you're gonna lose the connection. You can see now we lost the connection. And then you wait maybe uh, half a minute, up to one minute, and the Raspberry Pi should be completely shut down. So the physical green light on the Raspberry Pi board should not blink anymore. And the red light, of course, is still on because that's the power. And now you can remove the power supply. And then when you want to boot the Raspberry Pi again, you make sure that you have the SD card connected first, and then you plug the power supply cable. All right, that's the end of this tutorial. Your Raspberry Pi is now completely set up and you can start to build any project you want. Now, what to do next? Well, if you want to learn how to use the Raspberry Pi to build cool applications, check out my full complete course on Raspberry Pi for beginners. In this course, you will learn Python 3, you will control GPIOs and hardware components, use the Pi camera, send emails from the Raspberry Pi, create a web server, and much more. Check out the link in the description to know more about the course. Alright, thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial.